Each new day brings new challenges, but AARP only sees possibilities. We're tackling the concerns of our communities and supporting the kind of change that can benefit all of us. Take on today with AARP. Learn how at aarp.org slash sd. They need to feed the homeless this morning. Why law enforcement stepped in to see that the group took down their teepees near the fairgrounds. Plus, how mayors across South Dakota are making a statement promoting coronavirus precautions. Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom busters coming up. But first, our top story. One person is dead in an officer-involved shooting in Sioux Falls. Police responded to an apartment building in the 700 block of North Elmwood near the Denny Sanford Premier Center late last night for a person who was refusing to leave. According to police, that person began shooting a gun at one of the officers who arrived on the scene. That's when police say a second officer fired at the suspect. Police say the suspect received a gunshot wound to his head and died at the scene. The officer who was fired upon received minor injuries and did not require medical attention. The officer who fired at the suspect has been placed on administrative leave. The South Dakota Division of Criminal Investigation is investigating the shooting. Law enforcement in Rapid City say people who set up an encampment near the Central State's fairgrounds to feed the homeless Friday have taken down their teepees. Rapid City's police chief says law enforcement asked the group to vacate the site along Rapid Creek because it was illegal to set up a camp there. Police say the group was encouraging homeless people to spend the night outdoors, which they say would have put them in danger. They say there are beds available at Rapid City's homeless shelter. Police say they'll patrol the bike path along Rapid Creek to assist any homeless people who need help. Well, as you head out this weekend, mayors across South Dakota want you to pack a mask. More South Dakotans are dealing with COVID-19 than ever before. The state says there are more than 7,300 active cases. That's 2,000 more than a week ago, which was also a new record. Now, mayors from more than a dozen South Dakota communities have put their names on a letter from the South Dakota Municipal League asking for people to take steps to fight the spread of COVID-19. Well, it seems appropriate for uh, unity within the, the large cities of, of South Dakota. The intent there was to, sh to show people, hey, um, these municipalities are united in our messaging that we want to get out to our communities. I think it's important for everyone to realize we can make a difference. Each of us has the opportunity to make a difference by the choices that we make. And we can choose to wear masks, do the social distance, avoid the large gatherings, and follow all of the guidelines. You can read the entire letter by going to a link we've posted on Kelloland.com. Well, let's get our first check of the forecast now with meteorologist Brian Karstens in the Storm Center. Good morning, Brian. All right. Good morning, Perry. Good morning, everybody. Weather conditions today featuring some snow in the Black Hills. We begin with this, a winter weather advisory in effect for lead Deadwood also, it looks like Hill City and Custer. A few inches of snow kind of drawn out the next 24 to 36 hours. So prepare for some slippery driving conditions, believe it or not. I think it's fair to say right now snow amounts may exceed four inches. I would say probably four, five, six would be a pretty good guesstimate there for uh, the Custer area. Now in the Rapid City itself, it's not going to be that high. Maybe an inch or two uh, locally more just a little west of town. And once you push out toward Phillip, every Everything should be under one inch of snow, but just the fact that it's snowing that might get your attention. There's also some wind today across the prairies of South Dakota. So for the pheasant hunters, kind of keep that in mind, 15 to 30 and gusting a little higher, although the winds will tend to taper off in the west here as we go through the afternoon. More details on the forecast, Perry, in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Well, this is the day that hunters from around the country have been waiting for. Pheasant season in South Dakota gets underway this morning. Eager hunters arrived by the plane load at Sioux Falls Regional Airport on Friday. To them, a weekend of hunting in South Dakota is about more than just bagging their limit. Looking forward to seeing some good friends, and uh, we enjoy the camaraderie, and uh, uh, the whole plane was full of hunters. Looking forward to the same thing. 
The shooting starts at 10 o'clock this morning, a two-hour jump from previous years. Hunting season lasts through the end of January. The Kelloland Living Arts and Crafts Show features the talents of area artists and crafters during a unique shopping experience at the Ramcota Exhibit Hall in Sioux Falls. You can check out the handmade products from 9 to 4. Musician Andy Gibson performs from 1 to 145. Admission is $5, free for kids 12 and under. Masks are required. Donations of personal hygiene products will also be accepted. The Sioux Falls JC's Fear Grounds is a haunted house located in the Arts Building at the WH Line Fairgrounds. The ticket booth opens at 6.45 p.m. Door, doors open at 7. The haunted house closes at midnight. It's recommended for ages 12 on up. Hand sanitizer will be available on site. Spooky Science is a day of spirited experiments exploring the wonders of science at the Washington Pavilion in downtown Sioux Falls. The hours are from 10 to 5. All kids will go home with a prepackaged bag of Halloween goodies. Kids are also encouraged to wear costumes. Face masks are required. A Magician Among the Spirits is a live interactive magic show performed at Spellbound Magic Shop and Theater located at 5413 West 41st Street. Showtime is at 7 o'clock. Tickets are $15. And the Sioux Falls Stampede takes on the Fargo Force in USHL preseason hockey action. The puck drops at 7.05 at the Denny Sanford Premier Center. Brian? All right, Perry, as we look at our forecast here on FutureCast, we do see some clouds in the west today, and it looks like that snow area kind of blossoming here as we go into the afternoon across the Black Hills. There'll be some rain showers, too, in the far southwest. Once we get closer to winter, though, it doesn't look like much in the way of moisture. Just some clouds and temperatures in the 40s. And yeah, some wind. So it kind of just adds up there just to be aware of the weather conditions. Sioux Falls, though, still manages close to 58 degrees by early afternoon. Everybody's going to drop tonight, though, especially Aberdeen, low near 20, and Sioux Falls 24, which is some of the coldest air we've had so far this autumn season. And we're forecasting tomorrow some spots of snow Continuing in the west, although it'll kind of regroup tomorrow night. Could see a little fast-moving uh, wave here tomorrow night that might produce a little batch of some light rain or light snow. We'll have an update on that later today. Let's jump to your forecast now. And as we're seeing the numbers here on the extended forecast, we're going to be dominated by cooler than normal weather across the midsection of the country. And so that story remains unchanged most of the upcoming forecast. We are looking at 45 today in Pier, 58 Sioux Falls. 59 in Yankton. Those chilly overnight lows tonight, 21 in Brookings. Snow continues in Custer, low there, 19. And everybody's pretty cool tomorrow. 43 Sioux Falls and 40 in Aberdeen. Seven day forecast highs stuck in the 40s the next couple of days, but then maybe a chance to get back in the low 50s Tuesday with an opportunity for a shower. We might see another chance on Thursday. I do think Aberdeen might actually end up with a little more moisture and also some of that could be snow blending in Tuesday and again on Thursday. Overnight lows are going to be plenty chilly for that. And Pier in central South Dakota, there will also be areas of precipitation Monday and Tuesday. And uh, we'll wait and see how this whole end of the week shapes up, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if we had a little more, including Rapid City, where highs will tumble once again, only in the 40s there by day six and day seven of the forecast. Perry? Well, thank you for joining us for Kelloland On The Go. You can get up-to-the-minute developments right here on Kelloland.com. Have a great day.